Welcome back to the channel where we discuss everything low-code, no-code, AI, and automation. So picture this, you're a local business owner and you're putting in the work, but your website is getting absolutely buried under the competition. It's frustrating, right? Well, what if I told you there's a way that you can automate your SEO to rise up and dominate your local market without spending hours on manual optimization? Better yet, you can manage and update your SEO directly from a spreadsheet and it'll sync live to the web. I'm gonna show you how to do all that and more in this video, as well as show you how to create programmatic SEO that works for your business on autopilot, driving targeted traffic and boosting rankings in a way that's scalable and super efficient. This isn't just about throwing around keywords. It's about transforming your SEO strategy to create pages automatically for you. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, drop any comments below, and be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any other videos like this one. Okay, let's jump in and show you how this all works. All right, let's go ahead and get started. What we're looking at here is a spreadsheet for a fictional business that we created called Go Milo. Go Milo is a dog walking service that operates in 20 different cities across the US. Now, no matter what your business use case, whether it's a local string of coffee shops or a regional plumbing business, the process here that you're gonna follow is gonna be pretty much the same. I'm using Airtable here. Airtable is just a web-based spreadsheet or database, similar to Google Sheets, and you could actually use Google Sheets for this if you prefer, but I'm gonna use Airtable because I prefer the visual aesthetics of the Airtable interface. So what I've done is I've added all the different cities that I operated in. And again, I have 20 cities, so I have this field called city name. The next field that I created is called slug, and it's gonna be the actual SEO friendly URL that visitors will go to when they search for specific locations for my business. I've also created an image for each location, and I've added a description with some information about the services that we provide in this city. You could have additional fields or less fields depending on your use case. I'm keeping this intentionally simple to show you how it works, but just know that you're not limited to just four fields here. So what I've done is I've set up this initial database and this is super user-friendly. So any non-technical member of my team can go in here and make changes, add locations, add articles for specific keyword intent searches that we're trying to target and so on and so forth. So using Airtable because it's super simple for anybody to edit and update. Moving on, I'm gonna head on over to Webflow and Webflow is a website builder that also has a database or a content management system. I have some dummy data in here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these out. But what I've done is I've set up a basic site that has a collection and this collection is called locations. If I go ahead and edit this collection, all you can see here is we set up some basic fields. We've set up a name, a slug, an image, and description. And these are gonna sound familiar because they match the exact fields that we've created here. Name, slug, image, and description. So whatever fields that you end up wanting for your local SEO project, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make sure that you set up those same fields on your collection in Webflow. Okay, so I have those four fields set up and I have a really basic site set up and actually there's not really anything on this site except a CMS collection page. And this is a page that generates automatically based on the items in the database. So I can go ahead and click this template and we don't see anything here because we don't have any items in our database. If I were to go to our database, Webflow allows us to generate some sample items with AI. So let's go ahead and do that. We can generate five items. This is just gonna take a second. I'm just showing you this so you can see what it'll actually look like. And I'm gonna go back to our page. So created these five different items. These are not related to our use case, but if we go back to our page now and we go to locations, we now see this text. And all we've done is we've mapped these text fields to the items in our database. So if we click on this, we can go to settings and we can see that the text is mapped to the name field in our database. So we've set that up in advance, but that's all that I've done here in case you're trying to follow along. So let's go back to our database and we can actually select all of these and we'll go ahead and delete these out so that we don't have anything in our CMS here on Webflow. Okay, so we have our spreadsheet that's super easy to manage and we have our website set up where our pages are created dynamically, but how do we get our data from our spreadsheet to Webflow so that a non-technical person can make these edits and it'll sync out live to the web? We're gonna use a tool called WellSync and WellSync connects different data sources together. So what I've done is I've created an account and I've logged in. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit new sync and 
what we need to do is we need to connect our apps together. So I'm just gonna hit this blue button, connect app, and we're gonna choose Airtable as our first app and we're gonna hit authorize. Now what I need to do is add my base and I'm gonna choose Go Milo. If you remember, the base that I created here in Airtable is called Go Milo. So we're just gonna go ahead and choose that. I'm gonna come back to WellSync and I'm gonna hit continue. Okay, so now we need to choose the destination where our data is gonna to go to. So for this, I'm gonna choose Webflow because we wanna sync our data from Airtable to Webflow. I'm gonna go ahead and hit authorize. And this is a two-way sync between Airtable and Webflow. So if someone who makes a change in the spreadsheet, it's gonna to sync to our website. And if our website manager makes a change on the website, it's gonna sync back to Airtable, which is super, super cool. Okay, so we only have one Webflow project. It's called Go Milo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose that and hit authorize app. Okay, we've got our two apps connected. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit continue. And now we can add our table mappings. So this is super easy. Basically, we just need to map our fields in Airtable to our fields in Webflow. So I'm just gonna go through this pretty quickly. We're gonna choose our imported table. We're gonna choose the full table and we're gonna choose our locations collection in Webflow. Hit create table mappings. It's gonna to try to find the fields for us. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this and map them myself to show you how easy it is. So I'm gonna choose city name. I'm gonna map this to name. I'm gonna choose description. I'm gonna map this to description. Image is gonna to go to image. And finally slug is gonna to go to slug. Once we're done with this, we can just hit save and continue and we can prepare our initial sync. Okay, we hit scan records. This is just gonna take a second and what it's gonna do is it's gonna scan our records on Airtable and Webflow and see what it can find. It found our 20 records, which is perfect. We have 20 records here in our Airtable. Zero records on Webflow. Let's go ahead and hit continue. Continue again. And continue one more time. We can now hit activate sync. So what it's gonna do, is gonna push these initial records from our Airtable to Webflow. But then after the initial sync, it's constantly gonna be watching both these tables for any changes on either. So if we make a change on either the Airtable side or the Webflow side, we'll sync will automatically pick up on those changes and map these two databases together. So let's go over to Webflow. Right now it's synced four of our initial records up to 10 already. We can come back here. We're actually gonna see all these data items coming into our collection here on Webflow. If we go back to our site now, we can go to our pages, our locations template page, and we can choose any of the items that have already synced, so like Fort Worth. So now we can see we've got our image from Airtable, the location is Fort Worth, and we could see Go Milo is your number one choice for dog walking service in Fort Worth, known for its warm Texas hospitality, Go Milo provides friendly, reliable dog walking service, ensuring your pup stays active, healthy, and happy in Fort Worth. So we're really drilling in on these dog walking service keywords in Fort Worth. What else we can do here is if we go into the collection page settings, we can actually map our SEO settings to data in our database. So we can get the title tag from the title. We get description from description. It's actually already done this for us, which is nice. The open graph title is name description, but you could change these to be different items in your database. You could even type in your own text as well and see how this looks on open graph settings and search settings as well. You can also see that our slug is passing in here nicely. This would be our custom domain with our Go Milo Phoenix. So everything is working successfully. And again, whatever your business is or whatever your use case is, you just would get your list of keywords that you're trying to target you can quickly add those into your Airtable base here with any description that you want and any other information. And then you have this nice two-way sync between these two services. And in just a few minutes, you have programmatic, automatic SEO creating web pages for you based on the location in your spreadsheet. Okay, so I wanna show you a couple other things. We have the basic structure of our spreadsheet set up, but I wanna show you how easy it is to add additional columns to your spreadsheet and have them auto-populate with an Airtable formula. You could also paste information directly from somewhere like ChatGPT, but in this case, I'm gonna show you how to use a formula. So what we need to do is we need to hit this plus button here and we can name our field. We'll call this alternate description, just like that. And then we can choose the formula field down here at the bottom. And there's all kinds of different Airtable formulas. Quite similar to Excel, you can look up the different styles of formulas on the Airtable documentation. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this formula in though that I've already written. It's a simple one. It just says 
find the best dog walkers in, and then it passes in the city name from this first column. So let's go ahead and create this field and check this out. We now have an alternate description, find the best dog walkers in New York, Los Angeles, that we could use for SEO on our page. And we did this all automatically for every row in our Airtable with just a simple formula. Then we can just map this data just as we did before to Webflow and have it sync automatically. The other thing I wanna show you here is that if you notice when we synced everything to Webflow previously, they're all showing as published, but what we might want is for a non-technical person on the Airtable side to choose the status, whether it's a published, draft, or archived. So I'll show you how to do that here. So we come back to Airtable, we can add a new column. And for this column, we're gonna to wanna to choose single select and we call this field name status. Okay, so now what we need to do is add three options. And are, these are the three options that are available in Webflow. So we have active, draft, and archive. Okay, so now that we have these, we can go ahead and create the field. And what we can actually do is we can choose active for one of these and we can actually just drag it all down so that they're all active. Now, of course, you can change the statuses here between active draft and archived. But what we need to do first is we need to go into whale sync and set up this connection. So what we can do is we can go back to our whale sync connection and we can edit our table mappings. We need to disable our sync momentarily. And now what we can do is refresh our fields we skip this and we can actually choose well we see the alternate description which we could do we're not going to do that because it's the same thing as we did before but we can choose this status and we can actually sync this to the webflow status option so now if we hit save and continue we can re-enable and activate our sync so now if we come back to our air table let's just say somebody who's a non-technical website manager changes one of these status to draft what's going to happen here is whale sync is going to catch this change and it's actually going to make our listing for new york for the go milo dog site change to a draft on webflow side and we can see that happening here in real time let's come back here and if we come back to our page here we can refresh this okay and check this out we refreshed the page it took just about 30 seconds and now we're seeing that our location of new york is set to a status of draft so a non-technical person can usually come in here and change the status. And this actually reflects the actual publishing status on the Webflow side. So super, super cool. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any other videos like this one.